We'll begin outdoor electronics by looking at the basics of light emitting diodes. Consider the band diagram where I've got an electron at the conduction band edge and a hole at the valence band edge. They can meet each other and if they do they recombine emitting a photon. And this happens best when you have a forward bias junction and we're going to go over that a little bit. The process itself is referred to as injection luminescence and it happens fairly quickly over a time of about a microsecond. That's the recombination time. That's the time needed for an electron to find a hole and, and recombine with it. The energy that comes out of a single electron hole recombination is fairly small. We can calculate it. The energy of that photon coming out of that electron hole recombination is just hc over lambda or h is Planck's constant c the speed of light. Just remember that hc is 1240 electron volt nanometers. Divide that by the wavelength in nanometers and you have the energy of that photon. This can be around the gap energy because that's what's happening is an electron is leaving the conduction band edge and meeting a hole at the valence band edge and most gaps are something around two electron volts and sure enough you know if you've got a photon, a yellow photon of 550 nanometers uh, wavelength you're going to have a photon that comes out at about a little over two electron volts. In order to accomplish this, we need a forward biased PN junction. Let's look at why. If I've just got a PN junction of thermal equilibrium, I'll have some electrons on the N side and some holes on the P side. If I try to force them to meet each other, they naturally don't want to, but I can put a bias voltage on there. So I put electrodes on either side of the junction and bias it with a voltage V. When I do that, the electrons are going to be chased out of the N type region by that negative electrode. I'll reduce the potential hill, making that easier. The potential hill had been the built-in voltage, but now it's the built-in potential minus that bias voltage. So the electrons will head on over to the P side under the influence of that negative electrode. They will meet a hole and decay. So when the electron gets over to the P side, It'll see a hole and it will recombine and produce a photon. Because the energy gap of most semiconductors is somewhere around the visible and infrared and ultraviolet bands, uh, we're going to get photons in that range when we have exon decay. But now here's a question. Does light come from the P or the N side? Well, uh, the answer is both but one is more luminous than the other. The light will come more from the P side than the N side. And let, let's look at why that is. If the diffusion length of electrons in the material is, much, is larger than the diffusion length of protons in the material, and that's typically the case, the electrons can go further. And so electrons are going to diffuse farther into the P side than holes will diffuse into the uh, N side. So the electrons are much more likely to make it across the depletion length. The diffusion length is typically for, for especially for electrons, you know, one to two orders of magnitude, sometimes three orders of magnitude larger than the depletion width. We can rely on the, that diffusion process. We make one-sided junctions to do this, a one-sided junction which is very heavily doped on the N side to make lots of electrons that can diffuse a long way into the P side. You might wonder, well, why not do the opposite, have a, a heavily doped P side junction instead? You know, if you look at the mobility of electrons and holes, you realize, okay, almost always, no, not almost always, always, electrons have a higher mobility than holes. Given the case that the electron mobility is typically quite larger than, than the hole mobility, the electron diffusion coefficient will be much larger than the hole diffusion coefficient because they're linearly related. D is proportional to mu. So if electrons have a larger diffusion coefficient, they're also going to diffuse farther because the diffusion length is proportional to the square root of the diffusion coefficient. And so by making a junction that has a lot of electrons, that is, it's, the N side is heavily doped, we have a lot of electrons that can diffuse a long wave into the P side, meeting up with a lot of holes and producing a lot of photons so that you have a very luminous LED.